So now it's time for Tennessee Wildcast, live from Studio B at the TWRA headquarters in Nashville. Here are your hosts, Doug and Jason. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. I'm Jason Harmon, your host, and in studio we have Doug Markham and Miss Pandy English. So, and we're live on Facebook. There's Pandy right. right there. All right, Pandy. And there's the whole gang. Yeah. But we are live on Facebook. Doing this whole new experiment thing with something called Wirecast that you have masterminded in here. Well, we're trying to figure it out, and I think we're getting there. Uh, but last we week we were trying to be live on Facebook, and it wasn't working. But now we are live on Facebook. We are. We got on there. We used a iPhone trick to get on there too. Yeah, we, we had, had cord to, on, but this is a whole different ball game right here. Hot spot in it, but anyway, we're we're making it work, and uh, we're gonna try to monitor questions and and uh, yeah. If y'all have questions out there to ask Miss Pandy, yes. we will uh, let y'all ask, and we'll try to uh, answer them for you. All right, well let's let's get to it right away. Pandy English is our guest today. Pandy, thank you for coming on here and and helping us suffer through this you are very welcome <laughs> we're gonna make it work and we are doing this pandy because we want folks to be able to be more interactive with us to ask questions and all that kind of stuff and sure. whether they do or they or not it's up to y'all you can write them in there jason can see them talk to us yep and uh, if our anyway. connections work here we'll be able to see them yep everything's got to work but let's get started all right so pandy is the Pandy is our assistant chief of biodiversity, and that's a big long word for that means just about anything you can't hunt or fish for that's in, right. that's in right. Tennessee. That's so right. we asked Pandy because we posted something the other day. Mimi uh, Barnes, our Region Three information person, put something right. out there about snakes the other day, and boy, did it get the reaction! It was pretty viral for us yeah, on Facebook. Cool. It, it really got a lot of comments. About half of them, well, maybe a little more than half, were giving good positive. Uh, thoughts to snakes the right. other ones were not that's right that's <laughs> the other right. ones thought a good snake was a dead snake so that's what we want to talk about i want to talk about snakes in tennessee and uh, poisonous versus non-poisonous folks want to ask questions they can and uh, pandy one of the things that most people cannot believe is that it is illegal in tennessee to kill a snake that's right what does that mean exactly exactly what i said exactly what you said that's right it's illegal to kill a snake in tennessee uh, snakes are non-game animals and so it is illegal to kill any animal that does not have a season on it so snakes are protected and that's not the only reason they're protected they're protected because they're a vital part of our ecosystems they serve a very important part in the food chain i see that penny and I, i've been here a long time now and, and i'm of more of that age uh, that a lot of guys out there just aren't going to change their mind on snakes. But I, maybe because I've been to this agency for so long and I've listened to folks like you, I think killing a snake is you might as well go out and kill a songbird. I mean, they, I don't think there are any, I don't see a big difference other than the, the people out there saying, what are you talking about? The poisonous ones, yes. You got that's another thing. But most, the other 90% of them, they're just out there eating bugs. That's right. And mice. That's right. And, stuff like and that. mice, especially mice. And right. So, you know, folks are always shocked when I say I'd lots rather have a rat snake in my garage than, than a mouse, you know, because mice can carry diseases that people can catch. But snakes, you know, they don't carry any disease that humans can catch. They're just important as far as controlling rodent populations. And, and like you say, most of them are harmless. We've got 32 species of snakes in Tennessee. 32. 32. And okay. only four of them are poisonous. Poisonous. Okay. And I'm saying poisonous, but that's incorrect. They're actually venomous. Venomous. Okay, what's <laughs> okay. the difference? What do you mean? Uh, th so the difference is a poison is something you consume. So if you eat something and you die from it, you are poisoned. But if something injects something into you, then that's... That that's, makes a, sense. that's a venom. So a venom Excuse has, us for saying poisonous. There venomous. You go. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. so, so yeah, they're venomous versus poisonous. But we only have four that are venomous. And so, you know, we're, we're broadcasting from Middle Tennessee. Uh, those four are the cottonmouth, and it only comes as, as far east as um, Cheatham County. So typically, you know, if you get to Davidson County, you're safe from cottonmouth. Uh, the other one is the, um, the pygmy rattlesnake, which is a threatened species. I have looked and looked and looked and looked and looked for, for the pygmy rattlesnake, and I've never been able to find them. And one. they literally are about this They're long, tiny. Right? Yeah, yeah, they're only, they never get any larger than two feet. Okay. So, um, but you know, so if you're in Middle Tennessee, you've got to worry about you know copperheads and rattlesnakes. And I've been bitten by a copperhead. You so have. I have. Yeah. I have. I have been bitten by a copperhead. Wow. How'd yeah. that go? 
<laughs> it went fine. <laughs> You're still far, with us. As far as that goes. But she's still with us anyway. You know, yeah. and, and speaking of that, Venomous, even even the ones penny there are Venomous, you are still here. You got bitten. Even the folks that get bitten, how many, what usually is the result? How many die or how many get really sick? Or You know, something? it's very, very rare for anyone to die from a, from a snake bite. Um, when I was bitten by the, the copperhead, uh, I was doing what my mother always told me not to do. And that is, you know, if you're out in the woods, you need to always be able to see where you're putting your hands mm-hmm. and your feet. And mm-hmm. if you can see where you're putting your hands and your feet, then you don't have to worry about things that are going to bite you. But I was I was walking along a ledge, and I had my hands behind me to balance me and, and pop. Something just popped me right on the right on the finger. And it was a, a it was a young of the year northern copperhead, and it fell off onto the ground. And I looked down and I thought, oh great, I'm going to get bitten on the hand and on the foot on the same day. But I, <laughs> actually, it just crawled off. And and we I, I called in to dispatch and told them I'd just been bitten by a copperhead. They dispatched me through to the emergency room and they told me that if I had had a tetanus shot within the year, to go home and take a Benadryl. And that, that, was, right? that was for the northern copperhead. Now, wow. you wouldn't want to do that with a timber rattlesnake, and everybody's bites are, are different. So that's me, I'm, you know. But, you know, you if you get to a hospital, you know, one of my favorite herpetologists is Lisa Powers. She might be out there. Lisa's call, great. Call in, Lisa. Lisa's but, a, she's, she's a good <laughs> well, write in, Lisa. We do have a few write ins. Yeah. All, right, yeah. all right, all right, all right. So, um, you know, she always says her best snake kit is, a, you know, a set of keys. So, uh, so if you can, you know, get to the car, get to the hospital within a couple hours, you're going to be okay. Rattlesnakes, you might have some tissue damage, which is never good, but still, you're. It's very, very rare that you're going to die of a snake bite. And and what about the cottonmouth over Watermark? Because this this is Facebook. It goes all it over goes the all world. Over. Mm-hmm. So, uh, definitely over in West Tennessee, if you get bitten, if you should get bitten by. A cotton mouth. It's it's the same. Just get to the hospital. All of our, um, you know, venomous snakes in Tennessee are pit vipers. They pretty much have the same type of poison, uh, some more than others. But uh, so, just you know, get to a hospital and you'll be you'll be okay. And uh, we've been we've got some comments. Okay. One guy says, "Kill them all." Now, don't do that. That's uh, that's yeah. we'll talk about that. But anyway, we were just talking about you uh, a minute ago. <laughs> but anyway, they, somebody some folks said said uh, venomous versus non venomous, and then we corrected ourselves on that. That's true. Uh, not not poisonous, but venomous. Right, venomous. Non- that's that's right. my fault. Yep. So okay. that's all right. But we got some pictures that you sent us, and I was just curious oh, yeah, yeah. if you want to hit on sure. uh, images yeah. of these guys. So this is a, a rat snake, and this picture is taken by Bob English, my husband. And, uh, you know, we get more uh, phone calls about rat snakes than, than any other snakes. And, and the reason is, is, you know, you could be sitting out on your deck and all of a sudden, you know, the snake would be crawling up the, you know, the pole to get, uh, towards your deck. And these are the best climbers of any snakes. They're excellent climbers, and they're big, so they can get, you know, up to five feet, sometimes more, you know. And so they're large, and so they're they, they capture people's attention. I, I want you to look at the eyeballs on the snake. Too, oh, absolutely, right? yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, one of the ways that you can tell venomous versus non-venomous is you look at those pupils, and you see these are round pupils. And so non-venomous snakes have round pupils, and whereas is go, go ahead venomous snakes have vertical or elliptical pupils cat eyes um you know that's an adaptation for uh daylight so that you know snakes can't close their eyes mm-hmm. so they are they're like wearing goggles all the time their scales protect their eyes but they can't blink okay. so that might be <clears throat> one reason people are afraid of them they always think they're staring well at there's a reason <laughs> i don't know if it goes back to folklore tv or or other things but but there's a reason why some people just don't like snakes and 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 i guess maybe 40 years ago i didn't but as i said the last 30 i've been here and and uh, it took the time to learn some about them and and i don't fear them all the time still give them a lot of distance and sure if i'm wading down a creek and there's one swimming through it i stop right so i just that's my natural reaction to them but my other reaction is not to go kill them and getting back to the law on them there's you know Folks may have a rattlesnake in their garage, and I'm not saying wildlife officers are, we're not going to say wildlife officers are going to arrest you because you're taking care of an issue. Right. I think, though, the big issue there is don't go looking for them. Don't go where they live to try to kill them. Right. Right, absolutely, and it, and it is understandable if you find a, a rattlesnake on your your front porch steps, and you know you've got children, you've got dogs, you know, so you you, you know you don't want to you know 
endanger your family so we understand that but definitely if you're in a park or in a natural area or one of our wildlife management areas uh that is their home and mm-hmm. you are visiting them in their natural habitat and and they are just trying to make a living just like we are so um staying alive so um yeah please don't kill them out there and and they are harmless um most of them um I wanted to go back to the rat snake because yep. because we get a lot, if you can, mm-hmm. we get a lot of phone calls about rat snakes because people think that they're poisonous. That's what was or, posted or on Pandy's site, I mean, Miming's site, by the way, or our site. Go ahead. Yeah, people think that they are venomous because they um, are being defensive and if, if you've uh, got a snake in this position you know it is being defensive at this point and this snake will flatten its head out and so you know you've always heard a, a venomous snake has a wide head and a narrow neck well this snake purposefully flattens its head out so that it will look venomous right. it will hiss and it will even shake its tail in leaves okay. or debris and so people will call and say but it rattled and I'll say, well, did you see a rattle? They'll go, no, but it made a rattling sound. <laughs> rattling the leaves. But it's rattling. So these are all defense mechanisms that work on other animals, right. but they don't work on people. They get, get so them in trouble with they people. They get them in trouble with people. So we get a lot of phone calls about rat snakes. Now, the thing that people don't like about rat snakes is that they do eat eggs. So mm-hmm. they uh, are, this is a chicken snake. They'll get your chickens. You know, yeah. oh, yeah. well, your chicken's eggs. Your chicken's eggs and maybe baby chickens. But it, So whenever you've heard somebody say, oh, that chicken snake, well, a chicken snake is a gray rat snake. Okay. And so it is this snake, and they will eat eggs. And, and uh, I mean, I grew up with my dad switching the rat snakes because they ate his um, <laughs> chicken eggs. So so I know I've been there, and I don't know how I, 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 I grew to – I've even been did, given a program one time and the lady came up to me and said i don't know how your mother let you grow up if you like snakes that's, <laughs> that's funny i said well there you go i don't know how she either open-minded on it, open-minded there you go uh and one thing on these snake the one that you had up there the round eyes i will try to tell folks sometimes that they'll say i'm not going to get that close you really can tell eyes Absolutely. from a good distance you can you mm-hmm. can you can and yeah you can see this very you know at least five feet away and you can see this and and most of the times i have my binoculars with me so you can definitely see then yeah. um now the other things with uh, venomous snakes is you might not be able to see that pit you know between the nostril and yeah, the eye that would be hard that would be hard um but you know the other things you know venomous snakes have big head narrow neck chunky body typically not good climbers so if you just saw something climb up a pole to get on your deck it was not a poisonous snake because they don't climb that well okay um and uh, and just their their coloration so we, i think the next one is a yeah. copperhead let's, let's look at a poisonous yeah. pardon me a venomous yeah. snake a, a, get that venomous. a venomous yeah. snake and uh, you know and I'm sorry, you might think I'm, you know, weird or crazy or whatever. No. This this is a beautiful animal. I mean, this is a beautiful animal. They I mean, are. you cannot tell me this is not beautiful. I mean, look at those colors. Mm-hmm. I mean, they are copper in color. They're beautifully marked. Um, you can see the pit. Uh, don't have a. We can't point. I don't guess unless you've got a little mouth over no. there. No. But you can see the pit below the eye. All mm-hmm. of all of our venomous snakes are pit vipers. And the pit is an, a special organ that, that venomous snakes have, and it's a heat detector. So that allows uh, them to hunt at night. So they're going to lay in wait, and when a mouse runs down a trail or in front of them, they're going to detect that heat with that pit you know, organ, and then that's going to tell them when, when to strike. So, uh, yeah, this is a northern copperhead. Uh, when you look at the markings on the northern copperhead, mm-hmm. they have what is called hourglass markings. And you can see the head and the top part of that, but look at the bottom part. That hourglass is wide on the side, narrow over the top, and wide on the other side. Mm-hmm. Now, the there are snakes out there, again, that are mimicking venomous snakes, trying to protect themselves, but it, again, it doesn't work for with people. Uh, the northern water snake, which I think is the next slide that I, that I have, um, you know, these have, look at that, that's a saddle. Yeah. You know, if you go down to the uh, one, yeah. two, third, fourth one, it's a perfect saddle. It's narrow on the side, wide across the back, and narrow on the other side. That's a saddle marking. And so, you know, you might look at this and go, oh, it's a copperhead. And, you know, and a lot of people think so, many of our snakes are, are patterned like copperheads. But this is a this is a, a non-venomous, harmless snake, lives around the, the water. Um, again, just, it's, you know, again, to me, a, a beautiful animal. It's just, you know, striking. Mm-hmm. That's just a strikingly beautiful 
beautiful uh, animal. And these guys are interesting. Um, one of the things that I can talk about venomous versus non-venomous is right. folks have called and said, you know, I found some snake eggs in my yard. And I go, oh, wow, did you? That's cool. They go, what? I, no, well, I found some snake eggs in my yard. We need to do something about it. And I said, you know what? If you found a snake egg in your yard it, in Tennessee, you're 100% sure that that was a non-venomous snake because our venomous snakes are all live bearers. They give birth to their young alive. Oh, okay, that's cool. So, Something yeah, I didn't so, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you find snake eggs, which this... Oh, here we go. We're getting used to this. There you go, right there's good. We're getting used to this. So, yeah, so if you find a snake egg in your yard, this is a rat snake egg uh, found in my compost bin, you know, you it's it's non-venomous. It's non-venomous. That's so, cool. Yeah, that, that is cool. So our northern water... That's a great tip, too. It is. Yep. So our northern water snakes like this, they are live bearers. Garter snakes are live bearers. Our venomous snakes uh, bear um, their young alive, too. So um, they are oviparous. So they have their eggs inside of their body, and then the eggs break, and then they give live birth. But the garter snake is viviparous because it actually has a placenta. So it's our most you know, advanced snake as far as... Wow, well, did not know that. Absolutely. And probably right. one of the more commonly seen snakes. It's one of the most interesting and most commonly you know, found snake, garter snakes. Go- a lot of people call them garter snakes because you know, they're in the garden. They're eating lots of insects. Mm-hmm. So very good to have around. Okay. All right. What are the what are the other more commonly seen? Uh, I live in Creve Hall in Nashville, Tennessee, suburban area, and I see two or three of the same snakes all the time, the same patterns. So what are they usually? Well, usually they're going to be a rat snake, okay. you know, and um, the garter snake, and along the creek, snakes. yeah, a lot of garter snakes, and along the creeks you're gonna you're gonna have the northern water snakes. Um, you know, if your kids are out in the yard and they're turning over rocks, they might come up with a little ring neck snake. You know, so those are uh, are very common. Um, and if you're very very lucky, you'll have king snakes. And so people will call and, and they'll show me pictures of their king snakes. So even if you don't like snakes, you should like king snakes because they eat, eat snakes. other snakes. I've seen one do so, it in my yard. Oh, yeah. wow. <clears throat> and I also saw a hawk carry off a snake a couple of years ago in my yard. Tried wow. to take pictures of that. But, yeah. So they have their own predators too. They That's have right. things that will. Oh yeah, hawks eat you know snakes. The other snakes eat snakes. Will a yeah. will a turkey eat a snake? I bet it, yeah, a small one. Because I caught some video of turkey fighting with a little a black snake into my yard, and, and it was on Facebook and, and stuff, if y'all go back and far enough to watch that. But anyway, it was pouncing on it, and I think probably trying to protect her nest. Yeah, well, that, or, I mean, it depends on how big it is. I mean, if it's, you know, we have snakes as tiny as, you know, large worms, and they're called worm snakes. So, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of variety of snake sizes and shapes and colors and so, yeah, in, in Tennessee, we are very, very diverse. In whatever department you want to get into, we're, we're a very diverse st- uh, state, and that includes snakes. Do you, Pandy, do you know right off how many species of just, I know you said snakes, just how many species of animals we have in Tennessee? That's, that's asking outside the box <laughs> question because it's not game and non-game. Oh, me. Um, no, I do not. Okay, all we'll, right. We'll, we'll look that up later. Yeah. Okay. I, I could give them to you individually. You know, we've got, you know, 77 species of, of crayfish. We've got over 300 species of fish, over 300 species of birds. We've got just got to add them. Yeah, you just you got to add them up out there for okay, me. Right? I might get you to do that when we're done here. Today. Hey, let's show <laughs> them that real quick over there. I yeah. wanna, this picture? Yeah, let's show them that picture. I've seen this photo. It's been around forever. Here, right over there. It was in our trailer. Just You're like right. that, Pandy. There we go. There we go. Excellent. So, you know, this is showing on um, the the left. I hope it's your left. Um, a venomous. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we do, too. Uh, yep. Anyway, the one with fangs is a venomous snake. And the one uh, that does not have fangs and just has teeth, you know, that's a non-venomous snake. And so, um, you know, snakes have a delivery system for their venom. And, and that is they, they uh, have a fangs. And, uh, you know, if you ever get bitten by a snake and you look down and you see two puncture wounds in your hand or wherever you got bitten, then that was a venomous snake that just bit you. If you look down and you were bitten and you've got a horseshoe pattern of, of teeth on, on the wound, then that was a non-venomous snake. That's a snake. great tip, too. Yeah, yep. you know, and you I've been bitten once by a venomous snake and, you know, that wasn't very exciting. But I've, I've been bitten numerous, 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 uh, dozens of times by non-venomous snakes. I've been bitten by a black snake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. It just was a prick. And, and, and people would say, well, wow, what was that like? And I said, well, you know, have you, have you ever stuck your, your hand in a blackberry patch and mm-hmm. pulled it back? It, no, no worse than that because, you know, their teeth that they have, they're not using those teeth to chew anything up. All they use their teeth for is to hold their prey in place. Hmm. And they've got re- recurved teeth just like a recurved blackberry thorn. 
And so it just kind of catches you because they they eat their food whole, and so they're going to swallow the whole mouse or the whole rat or whatever whole snake, You're whatever good. it is. You're good. And yeah, good thing. <laughs> if, if you if you got bit by one of those and you jerked back, you know, or pulled would it pull their teeth or break their teeth or? You know, I don't think so because okay. our skin is pretty soft compared to their their teeth. Now, you know, sometimes um, they'll they'll chew on you. You know, if you. And, and that's because see these pictures like this we had you know we we kind of corral the snakes sometimes to get pictures mm-hmm. and so sometimes I'm, I'm working with them sometimes they'll get me and they'll kind of chew on me um but, but again it's no worse than if you were in a blackberry patch but uh but they i don't think their teeth broke no okay. Okay. But does, does a venomous snake use venom and venom every time it takes prey absolutely not okay you know so that copperhead bite i got was mm-hmm. non-eventful because it was a dry bite it was. Yes. And so that copperhead was just saying, I'm here, go away. But it did not deliver. I, it bled a lot, and I put my hand down and squeezed, and by the time I got to the car, it stopped hurting. Yeah. So it was a dry bite. And, and it, I think with copperheads, like half the time, it's a dry bite. So if you get bitten, and I know we used to talk about this a lot, maybe we don't have to anymore, but the old westerns always cut you up and suck your <laughs> blood out and the venom with it. So and then you die, you, of a, you die of a serious infection. So, <laughs> so please don't do that. Um, I do. Are we wrapping up yeah, or what? No, no. Go ahead. Good time. I do. I do have something else I wanted okay. to show for you. I don't know if I can show you or not with where we are, but um, a lot of times people will will call and say, "I found a snake skin." in my in the garage basement whatever and then you know i called the animal removers and they came out and they said it's going to cost hundreds of dollars to get rid of it and all this kind of stuff but it uh, not to say anything against our animal that's okay (laughs) (laughs) you may not see it sorry (laughs) go ahead but anyway you can (laughs) tell anyway you can tell whether a snake is venomous or not by its skin and I've even had people say, you know, or I've had people just, just mail me in their skin, put it in an envelope, put it in between two pieces of paper, send it to me, and I can tell you whether or not it was venomous or not. And that is because you can look at the, the skin. You've, you've got to be able to tell two things. You've got to be able to tell the head from the tail, which, you know, a snake's head looks... I mm, don't know if we can get that or not. Yeah, right there. Right there. there. We go. Looks great. You know, so you can see the, the head. You can see the eye caps. Mm-hmm there so that's one of the first things that they shed when they shed so that's the head and then so you got to be able to tell the back from the bottom you know the uh, dorsum from the ventral so you can see the the dark scales on the top and the light scales on the bottom then you go all the way down to the what is the tail and then if you look at the subcaudal scales Okay, right. sub yeah, there, there you go. That okay. just, that sub means below and caudal means tail. So the scale's below the tail. So if you look underneath, and again, I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah, you can really good. So, you know, if see those are two rows of scales mm-hmm. going down to mm-hmm. the, the tip of the tail, that tells you in Tennessee that that is a non-venomous snake. Now, if it was a, I'm going to show you a section of a rattlesnake tail. Uh-oh, look out, Doug. No, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Will it bite me? <laughs> now, right. this one, it, it might be a little hard to see it, but it, it's only one, one row, row of scales yeah. going, going across. So that's how you can tell. But, it, you know, I, you know, if folks want to send me a skin, you know, I can tell them pretty much if it's well, – I can tell them if it's venomous or non-venomous. And, and sometimes I can almost identify them because mm-hmm. we can look at whether or not the scales are killed and all that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. Contact that's, information for you? Contact information is you can uh, call at 781-6613, or you can email me at pandy.english at tn.gov. There you go. Say that one again. That was easier. If they want to send you something, you can, get, you can send them an address, right? Sure. Yeah, okay. yeah. So it's p-a-n-d-y dot english at tn.gov. Just like the language, right? Just like the language. Just like go. the language. There you go. All right, Pandy, anything else you want to show them before we get out of here today? And just um, I, Another question that people might be asking, can they can they keep wildlife? Can they keep a snake if they see one and they, and they like snakes and they want to catch it? Can they keep it? Good question. No, that is a very good question. And no, you, you cannot. You cannot remove any animal from the wild except, you know, during a, a season. There is no season on any of these animals, so you cannot remove them from the wild. Uh, if you if you have them, like a nature center sometimes will we'll have one, or the zoo will have six. They have right. a very special permit that they have for educational purposes. You can not take an animal out of the wild and return it to the wild, and that's for diseases and, and things like even that. Even so we couldn't bring in even, a yeah, live There snake. you go. We were going to bring <laughs> yeah. in a live snake and show it to you, but even we cannot do we that. We were told no. We were yeah. told don't do that. Okay, don't so don't we're going to follow the law just like there you go. Just like everybody else. There you go. There so, you go. all right. What else, Jason? Anything else? Any I, questions? You know, we've had 
fun here this, today, and and I hope we've informed everybody on you know all the good stuff about snakes. Yeah. And, there you go. Yeah, and, and thanks to the ones that did come in. We want more people to come in here. Pan, you've been gracious to let us work on this today. All right, very we've cool. been in and, and out we'll of Facebook. We'll get I mean, you back. There's so many animals you can talk about. There you go. All that plus three hundred plus. You do everything <laughs> but hunting and fishing, right? <laughs> And maybe a few in there. <laughs> All right, Pandy, you are great and appreciate Thank everything. It's pandy.english at tn.gov. There you go. She is the assistant chief of biodiversity. There you go. Even though right now we don't have chiefs, so you're kind of here. Acting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jason. Hey, thanks for watching on Facebook today. We are still live. We dropped out a couple times and I started it back. So we were in and out on Facebook, but thanks for joining us, joining us if you did. And keep coming back. We're going to try to keep doing this and be a little smoother, be a little yeah, cleaner. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Jason uh, will figure it out. We're going to be putting Jason. this show on YouTube, and uh, and uh, you can go watch the whole show there. But just keep following us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Had a lot of Twitter action this weekend during the 4th. We did. The boating stuff was great. Yeah. The officers did a wonderful job with it. And then Instagram. We're out there on Instagram. So just um, follow us the best way you can. And don't forget, tnwildlife.org, our website. All the information you need is right there. So. All right, Jason. Good job. Yeah. Pandy. Thank Great you, job. Pandy. Thank yeah. you. We'll Appreciate see you, it.